The hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for such the Father seeks to worship him. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 436. Good morning. I'm Dexter Lessier, and welcome to our morning prayer service on this eighth day of November. For those of you that are watching on our various platforms online, if please leave your name or a comment from where you're watching from, that we'll be sharing that later on in the service. So starting on page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Let us say the Venite together on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to hear his voice. The psalm for this morning is found in your insert, Psalm 78, portion, or portions of Psalm 78. We can say it together. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. 
I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and power of the Lord and the wonderful works he has done. He gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel, which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know, and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abram from behind the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Now therefore revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the people, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On page 86, let us say the first song of Isaiah together. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy. 
for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together, with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say a song of praise together on page 90. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. A reading of the gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I never really understood folks who live in the fast lane of life and live life on the edge. It's like driving a car with the engine light or the gas light blinking. We know what happens when we ignore the warning light. We get stuck on the side of the road, getting mad at ourselves for ignoring the light, thinking we knew better, and we could get to our destination with what we have. Jesus 
is our light. For folks who lose their focus or ignore him, he sends warning lights. We know the path he wants us to follow and where that path will eventually lead us to heaven. Have you ever seen a first century oil lamp? It was basically an open clay vessel that had no cover. And you can imagine carrying this thing while walking. It wasn't very practical. So the oil was kept in a flask. And a rag or a wick would be put into the center of the vessel, and the oil would be poured in. The maidens with no oil had some residue left, and therefore initially were able to light their lamps. But back then, the wedding feast was about the communal celebration of the promise of new life and new commitment. <coughs> Jewish tradition shows that sometime after the groom had asked the bride to marry him and received the consent of the parents, he would go over to the bride's house during the early evening and escort her to the wedding banquet. Now, on the way to the wedding banquet, the bride's maiden companions would wait for the groom and the bride to come. They'd escort them to the place of the festival with lamps. They would pick a point between the bride's house and a place of the festival and wait there until the procession would pass. Then the bride and the groom, when they got there, they would use their lamps like torches in the festal procession. In the gospel parable of the wise and the foolish maidens, those prepared and unprepared for the bridegroom's coming, we can see an allegory of Jesus as the bridegroom whose return is delayed. Just as the maidens of long ago, today some folks are falling asleep while others are anticipating his return. We see the lamp as an image for the word of God in which we use it to see God's way. And the oil is used by many Christians as part of baptism. Our faith is dem demonstrated by being alert in preparation for the Lord's return. Now, can you tell who the wise ones are and who the foolish ones are when we're out in public? It's difficult to tell because, you know, who are and who aren't the Christians. All of us have been given a lamp, but unfortunately there's many foolish out there because they have no oil for that lamp. The oil of grace, his grace, Jesus paid a price for his bride for you and me, and that price was his life. When Christ comes, you won't be able to borrow someone else's faith uh, or relationship with him. It may have seemed, when you read the passage, that it's unloving on part of the women who had the oil in the parable and not to share with those who didn't. But let's change the scenario a little bit. If the women had been carrying flashlights, would the wise women have been able to give the foolish women one of their batteries to keep everyone's flashlight going? <laughs> no. You need two batteries to make one flashlight work. In the same way, I can't, I can't believe for you any more than you can believe for me. We don't rely on the faith of others to get you into heaven. It just doesn't work that way. We often hear the song at weddings, here comes the bride. But the same, but when we look at the time of Christ, it would have been, here comes the groom. And do you remember as a child, uh, all the different games we used to play, one of them being hide and seek or kick the can? And you counted to 10, and then you shouted, ready or not, here I come. Well, there wasn't any more opportunity to hide or find a safe place. Today, 
most of us are prepared for the future event like having car, health, life, and property insurance. The same preparation is needed for the day the Lord returns. Our gospel scenario involves a delay along with sleeping and being ready. Now, the early Christians reminded one another that Jesus' return might happen suddenly, so alertness is necessary. And Matthew stands out among all the Gospels for emphasizing the final judgment scenes more than the other Gospels. And we can imagine how hard it was for Matthew's community to be vigilant after waiting 30 years for an imminent return. Now, project that out another 2,000 years, and you begin to appreciate the challenge of constantly being prepared. Realistically, when we think about who's still waiting eagerly, anxiously for Jesus' imminent return, we often picture in our minds, those who predicted on signs that they carry, and they're often made fun of. That kind of waiting that Matthew is encouraging through the parable, it's hard. Waiting for something way overdue, waiting that involves active participation, that kind of waiting is challenging. And waiting for Jesus' imminent return is difficult for most of us to entertain. But let's also recognize the opportunities for waiting on Jesus' presence are all around us. Each time that we work for justice, we testify to the presence of Jesus. Each time that we carry each other's burdens, we testify to Jesus' presence. Each time we advocate for the poor or reach out to the friendless or work to make this world that God loves a better place, we testify to the presence of the risen Christ. The Lord told us not only to wait for him, but to watch for him. And there's a difference between waiting and watching. I traveled on many flights when I was in the military. It was always an emotional reunion arriving at a U.S. airport from overseas. Now, sometimes the aircraft would be delayed for days before arriving, and seeing the family reunions was always heartwarming. Now, how do you think the military members would feel instead of seeing the loved one at the airport, they go home, open the door, and hear, I've been waiting for you. I think a typical response would be, yes, but the other members' families were watching for them. Perhaps you know some folks who identify with the bridesmaids' lack of preparedness in their everyday life, in their life of faith. What if we noticed our lamp was running low on oil? How would you respond? Can you recall when was the time that someone pointed you to the source of the oil for your lamp? Can you recall how they did this. What about you? As a disciple of Jesus, how might you help someone's lamp to be filled or refilled? The good news is there's enough of Jesus' love for everyone. The light of the bridegroom will illuminate the beauty of the darkness and bring us in joy to the midnight celebration. Amen. On page 96, let us say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. And let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that, having his hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We, O oh God, you make us glad with a weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A colic for the renewal of life. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A colic for peace, O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life. To serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all the assaults of our enemies, that we, purely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A colic for grace. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A colic for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you, so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for the church, the unity of the Anglican Communion and the Episcopal Church. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in the province of the West Indies. 
in the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for Trinity Victoria and Grace Westlico. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops David and Rayford, our deacon Dexter, our diocesan seminarians, our president Donald, our president-elect Joe, our governor Greg, and we ask for strength and healing for Allison, Tom, Joyce, Mary, Clark, Susie, Irene, Isabel, Karen, Ann, Rosalinda, Faye, Alberta, John, Ty, Clark, Sandra, Robert, Galena, Roberta, Lillian, Ophelia, Danny, Len, Marge, Mike, and Mandy. We pray for our military, both at home and abroad, but especially for Haley, Abram, Victor, Nathan, and Chasen. And we pray for persecuted Christians everywhere, especially in Nigeria, Sudan, Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Kenya, and Sri Lanka. And we pray for our outreach ministries, Divine Food Pantry, Divine Hospice, Hank, Southwest Family Life Center, our military ministry, and Mission Divine. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in thy Son's name, we beseech thee mercifully to incline thine ear to us who have now made our prayers and supplications unto thee, and grant that those things which we have asked faithfully, according to thy will, may be obtained effectively to relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of thy glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, go ahead and take a seat. A uh, couple things I'd like to, first of all, welcome everyone that is on our online community. We do have um, my friend Gerald in Cozumel. We have Dave in Iowa, David in Virginia, Tricia in Massachusetts, Pat in New York, Perry, San Antonio, Rose and Zeke in San Antonio, Samantha in Kentucky, Robert and Sandra, and Doug. So welcome. Yeah, I know there's many more against our, across our different platforms, but uh, you can see we have a wide reach with, with St. Matthias. I'd like to go ahead and thank all of you that are both here in person and watching online. About five months ago in June, I put a, re a request out for some support. Our altar linens were from the 1970s, and they've seen better days. Well, because of all of your support, this is the first Sunday where I can show you our new green altar linens because of you all. And along with that, we have um, the red, white, and blue for the different liturgical seasons. We also have, uh, I'd like to do a special thanks for Meg, because she ordered the material and did the initial sewing, and Evelyn, who did the fine stitching that you see that's on there. So from the bottom of my heart, uh, I asked for your help, and you came through. So I really, really appreciate it. Are there any other announcements I need to make? I see you shaking your head. Okay. So, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave of himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On page 101, let us say the general thanksgiving together. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. 
We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your measurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is hymn number 569. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.